What started out as a tragic loss of a family member would eventually turn sinister when a beloved wife disappears from outside her hotel. More questions than answers begin to pose, and her husband, kids, and loved ones are all wondering, where is Noella Rocundo? When the answers eventually come through, they are not at all what you would expect. We are your hosts, Sherry Ferreira and Helen Allen. This is The Chalk Line. Good evening, everyone, and the highlights of the news this Thursday. Noella Rakundo and her husband, Belanga Kalala, have been together for 11 years now. They first met in Melbourne, Australia back in 2004, and they were both refugees, actually. Okay. Belanga was from Congo, and he fled after escaping a rebel army. It's really intense. They had just rampaged through his village, killed his wife and young son. Oh, my God. Yeah. A lot so of tragedy. His, obviously, his wife before Noella. Yeah, before Noella. Okay. Got away. it. So both of them were just settling down and by chance had the same social worker that was just helping them get back on their feet and just get transitioned into this new culture and new life. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so at this point, they're both in Australia. Yeah, they're both in Australia. And I couldn't find where Noella was from, but it did say in my research that they were both refugees. So that's sort of how they Got it. Okay. began to talk. Okay. Belanga was actually recruited to help Noella because he spoke English and she only spoke Swahili. So he was her little translator and that's Aww. how they met. It was really good. Cute. My dad used to translate for my mom. I love that. <laughs> I love a little translator. I love a translator. Adorable. Right? Because then you just get to like bond and talk. It's before Google, you know? (laughs) I love it. So romantic. So they begin to talk and I can imagine they really bonded over this huge transition that they were both going through and got to know each other pretty well. So I wasn't really shocked to see that they fell in love and got married. Mm Mm-hmm. They would go you on. You say that like you were there. Right. I wasn't really shocked when my two friends got married and fell in love. I don't know if you guys, I was the social worker. I hooked them up. I hooked them up. You're like, guys, this next one is actually a personal story. <laughs> I just, I'm a fan of love. And you know what? I love to, I love to take people It's up. adorable. I love it. Let's keep going. <laughs> I love the love. They would go on to have three kids, plus the five kids that Noella had from a previous marriage. So... Needless to say, this was a big family. Not my mom. Yeah. Raising not nine kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mom. Upper. Not to Upper. mention the translating to... I don't... I, oh, are we talking are about, we talking about your mom? I'm a little triggered. <laughs> this doesn't end well, does it? No. Oh, God. No. So, not exactly your mom, but... Oh, God. <laughs> they decided to settle in Kings Park, which is a suburb of Melbourne, And they got to be pretty established within their community. And by established, I just mean they got to be really well known in their town. Okay. Yeah. Like through having kids and just like having that big family that everyone kind of knows eventually one of them. Yeah. They're like, oh, I know them. Like heard that last name through and through. Yeah. Actually, I had all seven of those kids. (laughs) And then the other two are coming next. Next. So yeah, it's fine. (laughs) Yeah. Everyone knew that. Okay. I mean, I come from the family, so I know that. Yeah, I know, you like, know. the town being right. another Allen. Oh, but my, my teacher, God. oh my God, my, this is not to do with anything, but my Spanish teacher in high school, he's like freshman year of high school, I roll up, I'm like, this new girl, like, in town. Okay. Just, I don't know why I'm Ooh. making it sound like I was new. No, this I is very not. mysterious. In You're an town. enigma. I don't know why <laughs> I just made it sound like that. I literally lived that town since I was little. But anyway. So I'm, like, rolling up to my freshman Spanish class. Um, the teacher was, like, listing the names, calling attendance. She gets my mm. name. It was first. I don't yeah. know why I'm acting like she went down the line. <laughs> Alan. Alan. It's first. <laughs> Helen Allen. Oh, my God. There's another one of you? <laughs> I go, no, I don't class. know them. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm actually twice removed. I was like, I have. Alan's a common name. I don't know those people. Oh <laughs> so, Belanga actually built up a really good reputation in their local Melbourne community, as I've said. So, things were going very well. Okay. That is until Noella got the news that her stepmother had passed away. Um, so, 
I mean, I imagine, obviously, if this is, like, tragic for her, she was close with her stepmother, even though it's not a mother directly. Oh, of course. You know? Yeah. She says that it was very sad for her because this was the last person that she called mother. Oh. And she, yeah, so you can, they had a very close relationship from that. I mean, she was very distraught and... You know, just going through the motions. Yeah, painful. Definitely. So, it's February 2015, and like I said, it's a really painful time for her. So, both Noella and her husband make the trip to Burundi, Africa to attend the funeral. Okay. Naturally, her husband was very worried about her and was really looking out for her, just like any good partner would do. They ended up staying in a hotel in Bujumbura. Okay. Which is the largest city and national capital of Burundi. So it's Burundi. So it's very populated. And that day specifically was very hot. So overall, just not a good combo. No. For My least like favorite thing. Yeah. Populations. Humidity. <laughs> and then grief. So yeah. it's recipe for That'll disaster. Do it. That'll do it. At some point during their stay, Noella wanted to take the evening to just get back to her hotel and relax. I couldn't really find or confirm if this was... I'm sorry. I just have to go back because I did say before that I didn't like populations. (laughs) (laughs) Like what? (laughs) Like what a hermit. And I just have to admit I'm a little drunk. (laughs) No, it's okay. It's It's not a mystery. We drink wine here. And I didn't mean for it to sound like I don't like the human population. <laughs> she, she like the human race, take but it out. Some of them, I don't know. I don't know if you guys know this, but Helen is Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> she is Thanos. Um, it's been very hard having this podcast with I her, just but we're can't making wait it work. To take out the human race. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're making no. it work. So, like I said, Noella wanted to just go back to our hotel and relax, and I couldn't confirm if this happened the day of the funeral or later on during their time there. But I have to assume it happened pretty close to it because. Noella says she was feeling stressed from going to the funeral and seeing all her family, so she just wanted to take a break from all that. Yeah, I can imagine. Like I said before, her husband was very concerned. I mean, I would be too, just being locked up in a room all day and seeing the person I love just cooped up in there and just... Especially because, like, you know somebody, but you don't know how they're going to grieve when they lose someone so big. So you never know, like, is being cooped up in that room good for her, or is it kind of counterintuitive? Like, what is the right Agreed. You don't know what to do. Yeah. He tells her, you know what? Go outside, get some fresh air, and just maybe take some time for her to clear her head, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. So Noelle's like, you know what? You're right. (laughs) So she goes outside, but she doesn't make it very far, because immediately a man ran up to her shoved a gun at her face, and forced her to get into a car. Oh, my God. Okay. She was kidnapped. And mind you, her husband is still back at the hotel and is oblivious to what's going on. I mean, just outside right. the hotel. Yeah. His wife is being taken. After some time, he obviously notices she is gone, and there aren't many reports on what happens in the next couple of days, but I honestly can't imagine the panic that he was in i mean he is so distraught i mean they came there in the first place for a funeral so the thought of on top of this exactly it's too much there's only so much he can do i mean he has nine kids eight kids (laughs) i've been saying nine i don't know if that's (laughs) okay no let's set the record straight she has five kids from a previous marriage and three kids with her husband I'll now. I'll tell you what, that is eight. That is eight. I said nine. Forgive me. Look, I failed math. <laughs> and don't hold me to it. And you don't need but, it. Yeah. Ever have I ever it. used math? Are you going to be a surgeon? No. So you're fine. No. <laughs> so let it be known, she had eight kids. And he had to get back to those eight kids wondering where mom and dad are. So he couldn't exactly stay there for long. Oh my god, yeah. But when he does return to Melbourne, he's constantly communicating with Noella's family and just trying to get updates. So are Noella's family in the area that she got kidnapped? The funeral was there because maybe, is she from there? Yeah, she's from there. Okay, so... Are they able to be there and be a part of, like, yes, things so, unfolding? Yeah, so they're more being on top of what the police is doing, if anything, and they're really trying to get 
something happening here okay. because according to the BBC, um, Noella's husband gave her brother $545 just so the police could open up an investigation. Oh my God. Which I don't know if that's how they operate. It doesn't sound very normal, but. Can we talk about our criminal justice system being oh, messed up. Mm, right. Like. <laughs> it's, it's very worse in other places. Yeah. I mean, just from doing a little bit of research, I saw that they were notoriously corrupt. Okay. So I'm not sure how much that goes into play with that. Yeah. Noella's brother gets the money and is just hoping they can start investigating and find his sister, obviously. Mm-hmm. Noella's husband wired the money immediately and everyone is just like waiting, hoping that Noella would be found. Her husband, like I said, is constantly checking up with Noella's brother for any tips or news but nothing happens. Time goes by and still no one knows where Noella is, if she is okay, and it's still unclear what or even if the police are doing anything to help find her. Okay, so no one at this point has, like, really been in touch with anyone that's moving things forward. At all. It seems like everything is stagnant or just that they simply don't care. Okay. Noella is presumed dead, and her family back in Melbourne begin to plan her funeral because they're not hearing anything, you know? So I can't, they probably know the area better than anyone else. Right. So I can assume they came to their own conclusions about what happened to Noella, which is so tragic to even think about. Yeah, definitely. Everyone is pretty much of the same idea that Noella died in a tragic accident. And throughout this entire time, her husband is in tears grieving i mean he's the entire family was at a loss right like what does he tell their children and, and he doesn't even have anything to tell like i don't even know how to approach that situation yeah it was really sweet though because their community really stuck by the family and offered spiritual and even financial support for them this brings us to the day of the funeral and everyone is mourning the loss of Noella. Friends and family are leaving her home and her husband is saying bye to the last of the guests when suddenly out of the corner of his eye, he spots something. Something familiar. More accurately, he spots someone. He sees Noella. No, he didn't. He did. No, he didn't. <laughs> he did. Not Noella going to her own funeral. <laughs> No, 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 literally. I'm like, I just wish I could be a fly on the wall at my funeral. And Noella's like, next level. Yeah, I am not a fly on the wall. I am showing up. up. And guess what? I got a Gucci dress on. (laughs) Like, showed up to show up. She literally showed up. Listen. I need to know. Listen. It is the face he never thought he'd see again. I mean, he is in shock. Everyone stops and just takes it as what they can only describe. They're all like, we are crying for you. (laughs) And now I feel like a fool. (laughs) And I mean, (laughs) literally. Could you imagine? I'm sorry, but just imagine being a guest at that funeral. I I would never go to another. I cried all day. And you're just going to show up here in your Louis Vuitton bag. (laughs) I mean, it's like. I don't know if Noella was rich, but to me she is now because she's showing up at her own funeral. I know she got the funds, girl. <laughs> I would, I would Noella never. Is a queen. <laughs> that is the energy we need. No, we love Noella. She's like, Hi. I can't believe this. This is a movie. She does the piece. It's not real. And, like steps in. It's You're gonna real. tell us it's not a real case. It's real. It's real. <laughs> she is. She's present. And presume dead. My. Presume that de- literally, literally. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sorry. Like, Let's get to the story. I just can't believe it. Everyone is just in shock. They could share some of the same Me emotions too. we've. Right. I'm shocked. Naturally, and okay. I, I literally can't even begin to picture what they're feeling. But everyone's head is spinning, except for Noella's pastor, because God told him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking you, did God tell him? No. This story keeps getting crazier and crazier. Because <laughs> God told him. I know what God said to him. God no. told me too. No, shut, shut up. <laughs> God did not tell you or Noella's pastor. God's like, I didn't talk to you this week. I don't. <laughs> He's like, you haven't been picking up in a while. You've been playing around with <laughs> I don't like. <laughs> He's like, let alone call we, you. You and I are not on terms. <laughs> 
This is actually a spiritual podcast. Uh, yeah, you guys, this has taken a turn. No. But everyone... I would like to sit here, and I would like to, to ask God for forgiveness. No, it's okay. This is very vulnerable. I'm just and kidding. And brave. Everyone, I'm so sorry. I'm we sorry are brave. I brought you into this moment. It's I okay. am brave. You are. I'm always brave. <laughs> if you had a chance to change your fate, <laughs> would you? So Noella shows up to her funeral. I'll take over. Noella shows up to her funeral. And she said, listen, you done tried to crucify me, but. <laughs> she literally did not say that at all. Noella's pastor had gotten a phone call from Noella just a few days ago, telling him a story he could not believe. Not one bit. Uh-huh. Noella tells him that she is alive. And she's still in Africa. Oh, no. But she needs his help to get back home. And he needs to keep it a secret. But she goes on to tell him the reason why and what happened to her. And she tells him that her husband had just tried to take her life. She tells him that her husband, Belanga, hired hitmen to kidnap and kill her. Mm. And that she had 80 hours to get back to Melbourne or more people would be after her. Hours. What is this? Yeah, Weirdo. very specific. You'll see. And this is where our story actually begins. I mean, if you have not already told me a story, <laughs> I feel. Listen, I, it's time. I told you a story. It's time for a tale. Okay. Here we go. So Movie if you, time. If you guys recall, Noella had just went outside for some fresh air after grieving the loss of her stepmother. She hadn't even gotten that far before. When also her husband told her to go outside. Yes. Toxic. To- <laughs> That's his toxic personality. Anytime your husband's like, girl, go you've been in the to- apartment for too long. You'd be like, it's toxic. Listen, it's toxic. But like you guys remember, she had just went outside and she didn't even get that far before a man ran up to her and threatened her with a gun. He ordered her not to scream and said that if she did, he would shoot her. But what I think really made her fear for her life and what would make anyone fear for her life was what he said next. He says the worst that would happen would be that he'd get caught if she did scream, but she would already be dead. Absolutely unhinged. This is a man who is absolutely unhinged and rogue and you need to fear the out of You need to listen, which is what she does. She doesn't say a peep. And she gets pushed into a car, blindfolded, and they take off. Noella recalls being put in the back seat, like, in the middle, sandwiched between two men. So there really wasn't much room for her to try and do anything. No, she's absolutely stuck. She just has to try to survive at this point. Exactly. After 30 or 40 minutes, the car stops. The men order her to get out and they push her into a building until she is, like, forced into a chair and tied down. Oh my god. All of a sudden, the men just start, like, screaming at her with a bunch of questions. Like, what did you do to make him so mad? And she's like, I don't have problems with anyone, dude. At this point, does she know it's her husband that ordered the hit No, she still has no idea. Oh my god. She's just in fear. Like, no reason to think that her husband would do anything. My question is, like, if the hitmen are like, what did you do to make him so mad? My question is, like... Why are they just, like, willing to get rid of her without knowing what she exactly. did? The men reveal that the he they're talking about is her husband. And, of course, Noella is in denial. And she's like, nope, not me. You guys aren't talking about this is my the wrong, husband. You took the wrong girl. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, my God. But the men are insistent that her husband hired them to kill her. And they can prove it. One of the men makes a call and puts it on speaker for Noella to hear. And when Noella hears her husband's voice give the order for them to kill her, she faints. Because it's confirmed for her now. She's like, yeah. they're telling the truth. That's, yeah. She realizes that the man that she loves is the one who is trying to kill her. I don't know what I would do. Well, first of all, I would die. I, I would faint. I would be like, no. First of all, they would kill me. Yeah. Oh my god. They'd be like, I do not know how she got out of this alive. I can't you wait. will see. I cannot wait. She wakes up to the hitman explaining what they were hired to do and explains their job in general to her. They're like, do you want to apply? <laughs> <laughs> they 
<laughs> Why are they explaining their job to her? I don't get it. No, and it gets even weirder because <laughs> what they do tell her is that they have certain rules they follow. Rules like the fact that they don't kill women or children. And because of this, they aren't actually going to kill her. Oh my god, not me on the hitman side. <laughs> no, listen. It's they also just casually tell her that one of them knows her brother. So okay. I don't know. I'm how- confused. How did Belanga get the information for these hitmen? Through I- her brother? Like wh- where was the I said before the hitmen should vet the man that they're they're doing the job for. The man that's hiring the hitman should definitely vet the hitman. And what did he... I think he put an ad out on Craigslist, He didn't ask them, like, hey, do you guys kill women or children? (laughs) Not at all. He also didn't say, like, hey, do you know my wife's brother? (laughs) I mean, which just tells you how much of an absolute idiot he is. Yeah. Like, stupid. So I don't know if the fact that they knew one of her brothers also had something to do with them letting her go, because did you not see that she was a woman when you approached her? I'm just... I I feel like they were trying to teach your husband a lesson. They're like, let's good money. We're going to take it. And then what we're going to do next is not kill you. (laughs) They go on to tell Noella that they are not going to kill her and that they're going to lie to her husband, wait until they get paid, and then set her free. (laughs) Businessmen. They even ended up convincing her husband to send them an extra couple of thousand dollars, saying that their fee went up. And he did it. Businessmen. Where is Wall Street when you need (laughs) that? These men deserve Wall Street. (laughs) Seriously. Two days would pass before they let Noella go, but they didn't leave her with nothing. I mean, they left her on the side of the road, but they gave her a bunch of incriminating evidence to use against her husband. Hell yeah. This includes the cell phone they used to communicate with him, recordings of their phone conversations, and receipts for the $7,000 they got in payment. Oh my god, not him thinking that his wife's life was worth $7,000. Exactly! He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves everything that he gets coming to him. I can't wait to go to this funeral party. Oh, it's, it's, oh! This is the ultimate party to go to. (laughs) These people are talking about this party for this day. I mean, I wouldn't shut up about it. If my great-great-grandmother was there, (laughs) I would tell my friends about it. Right. Like I feel like my my dog you walker never went would there. Guess <laughs> the party my great 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 twice removed grandmother went to. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. crazy. It's it was crazy. It was like I was there. It was, it was truly insane when this case broke. I actually heard about it from a TikTok. I'll mention him at the end of this episode. <laughs> I love that. I'm so sorry, but I just think No, don't be sorry. I, uh, I you know what? You yeah, know I'm not apologizing TikTok? for it's TikTok. Good. It's good. But his at is slow-mo, S-L-O-O-W-M-O-E-E. I'll link it in our show notes. But he was talking about the case in like a 60-second video. And I was like, I want to research this. I want to know more. I want to talk about it. And I know we're joking a lot, but in a lot of articles I read, I didn't like how they almost painted the hitmen as they were like her saviors. So I just wanted to make it clear that although we're joking and making light of this tragic situation, that these guys weren't by any means good guys. I mean... No, yeah, you're right. No, because, like, at the end of the day, we're not a news source. Oh, no. If you're listening to us to, like, be updated on... You're wrong. Yeah, you're wrong. I'm just going to tell you, you're (laughs) wrong. You can listen to us to, like, hear interesting cases, and, like, we have, like, funny takes on things sometimes, and that's fine, and, like... Sometimes it's nice to, like, just, like, riff off of people's other opinions that you hear about things, and that's what we're doing, and any news source has, like, a duty to, like, do justice by the news that they preach. Exactly. And it's messed up by, like, the nth degree to make it seem like anybody who is not a victim or an actual hero in the situation doesn't deserve what exactly. they deserve. Exactly, because they do Obviously, have... Obviously, they're hitmen. They've yes. killed people before. They will do it again. And at the end of the day, like... They shouldn't be painted in this they, light. They especially... kidnapped her. They didn't report him immediately when he asked them to. They're not good people. Exactly. And as news outlets and certain things like that that do have that reach and credibility... Should not be. That need to be educating people. If you are looking for more facts, we always link everything we find in our notes and in our episodes. So 
But the news should definitely be um, more careful with exactly their choices of words and how they paint the people that were involved. Exactly, and we're obviously so glad that Noella is spoiler alert, still alive and okay to this day. But it doesn't. It wasn't done by any means out of the kindness of their hearts. Noella recalls that when she was dropped off, they told her, "We want you to go back to tell other stupid women like you what happened. You must learn something." You people get a chance to go overseas for a better life, but the money you are earning, the money the government gives you, you use it for killing each other. Oh my god. So they weren't like these angels. No, definitely not. No. By no means. Yeah. Noella <laughs> recalls them being very violent to- toward oh. her and almost blaming her for all this occurring. So I just wanted to get that out of the way and make sure everyone knew that they weren't by any means doing this to be nice. No, absolutely. It's no. just... I mean, we've, like, talked about stuff like this before, but, like, even, you know, just with any job, you have rules to your job. Their, like, hitman lifestyle is a job to them, and they have rules to it. So if they don't kill women, it's not, like, because it's out of the kindness of their heart. Exactly. They just don't kill women, and that's their rule. And, like, you know, at the end of the day, like, they were probably not pleasant to her, even though they didn't kill oh, her. Oh, of course. So just, like, I feel like... I mean, obviously, it's, like, funny and stuff to joke about it because we know that she is alive and well, but God forbid anything did happen to her. This would be a much different story. And we just wanted to get that out of the way. Along with everything that's happened, they tell her, we give you, so they're talking to her now, and Noella recalls this, they tell her, we give you 80 hours to leave this country. Your husband is serious. Maybe we can spare your life, but other people... They're not going to do the same thing. If God helps you, you'll get back to Australia. Okay, they are completely turning on her. Oh, for real. They were like, and I can imagine. Before I was like, oh, cool. They're not going to kill her. Cool. Maybe they had a change of heart. But now I'm like, okay, um, so they're blaming her that her husband wanted to kill her. Mm -hmm. Not like, oh, we work with a bunch of scumbags all the time. Crazy people who want to kill their significant others. Crazy people who want to kill people they don't even know. No, and of course, oh, I can the imagine... The guy who wants to, like, kill someone out of the blue is not the crazy one. The person <laughs> getting killed is. <laughs> like... What year is it? Make it make sense. <laughs> literally. And I, I can imagine she was thinking the same thing, of feeling that immediate relief of, oh, they're not going to kill me, and then further being like, no, we're serious, we're not going to kill you, to having them treat her like this. Anyways, Noella was now free. So what did she do? She got the help from the Kenyan and Belgian embassies to get her back home in Australia. She then called her pastor, like I said, in Melbourne to help her get home. She told him everything and they worked out a plan. But at first, her pastor was like in denial because he obviously had a close relationship with both of them and knew them as this loving couple. But after assuring him what her husband had done, being like, no, dude, I'm serious. This happened. Like, you have to believe me. Mm-hmm. He does. And he agrees to help her get back home without letting anyone know that she was still alive so she could come to the funeral. I literally love this so much. We find out that Belanga, her husband, had actually been telling people that she died in a tragic accident, like, as soon as he got back, without knowing anything. Okay, so what are, like, the news outlets like? Like, no one was going to be able to look into it further? He just was so confident in this, like, story that he was spinning. Why wouldn't he just be like, I literally don't know. She disappeared. I think he was so cocky and just idiotic. Like, that's the only thing I can chalk it up to. I mean... And it turns out all those updates that he was calling Noella's brother for was to see if a body had turned up anywhere. So he wasn't doing it to be like, oh, is what's the investigation? Like, he's like, so did you guys find out, like, a body just by any chance? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Talk to you when you do. Bye. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and Jesus. this brings us to present day in our story and Noella's husband's reaction. I mean, Noella was waiting in the car and waiting for the right moment to approach him and when he did see her it was like he saw a ghost well he thought he did yeah probably Le- he, <laughs> he was does. probably like that's not her that is her haunting me girl he does noella said he looked like he needed somewhere to hide and he said oh i'm finished and just kept repeating those words and noella the first thing she says is surprise i'm still alive which is what the washington post reported but i mean just I just love Noella with my entire being. 
There's nothing else to be said except for that she is an absolute bad <laughs> and deserves a Hall of Fame somewhere. That's it. This is just what I need from the, this life is that Noella Ricondo is put in a Hall of Fame. That's it. Thanks for listening, somewhere. guys. You can follow I- <laughs> <laughs> So her husband comes over. Like you said, he literally thought he saw a ghost. He like taps yeah, her. He was t- like, that bitch is dead. That is a ghost. Yeah. He taps her twice <gasps> before realizing. Are you still there? Is that yes. you for real? Yes. This is you in the flesh. He's like, are you Are you sure? You can't see me, but I'm grabbing Sherry in person. Yeah. Oh my God. For the theatrical effect, yeah. you know. He taps her twice before realizing that she's actually there and is alive. And he starts to jump and scream. At this moment, he's like, I better flee for the hills. My life is I, over. I he mean, starts apologizing like crazy. Apologizing? You, I love the way your voice cracked right there. Not a toddler. Not a toddler cracked. learning how to say sorry. Yeah. Like, I'm so... Like, sorry doesn't cut God. it. You ever heard it? <laughs> yeah. I don't... <laughs> it's it's not going to work this time. You know when your mom told you you say sorry too many times and you don't change? Or was right. that just mine? Right. But at the end of the day... <laughs> Sorry doesn't cut it. You you almost killed your wife. Right. And um, you by accident did it, but now you're sorry. Mm, like, go. Oh, my God. Jump off. Oh, the my God. And it turns out that $545 he sent to open the investigation, he didn't send it just out of his free will. Noella's brother had to ask him to send it over, and he just sent it over out of, like, oh, yeah, sure, like, I was of kind thing. of wondering why he would open up his own investigation, yeah. but I guess he was his hands Try- were tied. He had to look like the yeah, he husband. wasn't trying to be suspicious at yeah. all. Yeah, okay. Like I said, he starts apologizing like crazy, saying "I'm sorry for everything," and Noella is not having it. She immediately calls the police, and he's thrown off the premises. Yes, Noella turns into a party. Right. Everyone's like, "Oh my yes, god, Noella." <laughs> <laughs> Call a DJ over. <laughs> like, let's get the party started. Because <laughs> I mean, literally, that must have been such a like I can't just beautiful believe moment this. for them. They're all so. Oh my gosh, I really can't believe it. It's just a beautiful story, so far. <laughs> no, it's it stays. No, nothing happens. It stays positive. Okay, thank That's God. Good. I'm like, I don't know if anyone actually yeah. does. I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> And at the beginning, they'll get the police in Australia to be involved. And her husband denied all involvement until Noella got him to confess to the crime during this phone conversation that was secretly recorded by the police. Yes. Big Noella. ups to her. She's amazing. She's really the best that is who we all aspire to be. I mean, really. Oh, Could you imagine? Literally. I can't imagine this. I can't wrap my brain around being kidnapped, then showing up to my own funeral, then burying this man the sh- in legal fees. Mm-hmm. And, like, I mean, <laughs> he's absolutely done for, right? Oh, yes, She's done for. She's recording messages. She's like, listen, if you live to see the day mm-hmm. that you get put in prison, you will never live to see the day that you get out. Exactly. Because I am recording well, everything you ever said to me. I know. And that's what she's hoping, but we'll see later how everything turns oh, out. Oh, no. Yeah. He's not in prison? Give me his address. He is... What's his address? He's still... <laughs> no, he is in prison still. But through his confession, we find out that his whole reasoning behind him hiring her hitmen, behind hiring someone to kill his wife, was because he thought Noelle was going to leave him for another man. And she probably should. Oh. I mean... After this... This kind of guy is not who she wants. And I think all. this solidified it. If she, if she was curious about another man... She is more than interested now. I... <laughs> she is on hinge. You know? And she is ready for a new man. man. So, in the aftermath of all this, Noella is giving interviews to the Washington Post and the BBC, and she is insistent that she will marry again. Good. Good. Her husband pleads guilty and is only serving nine years in prison so he will be released in 2024 and i will literally be at his door in 2024 i'm not kidding and if all this wasn't frustrating enough noella actually got a lot of criticism from her community in melbourne chief How? just what could they have know, to say well chief justice warren said that her husband had been a hard worker and a good standing man in the australian community prior to this charge 
Who asked him? So, I Who literally... Who asked you? Stop. 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 <laughs> I just want to know like, who asked Chief Justice Warren. You're like, but did I ask? I don't... Cool. At the time, Noella was ostracized by a lot of people in the Melbourne's African community specifically who blamed her for his conviction. Um, because it wasn't his fault that he hired a hitman. Yeah. No, it wasn't his fault at all. Why are we blaming him, actually? I forgot. <laughs> oh, because he hired a hitman. Yeah. Right, right, right. No. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, yeah. She got a lot of backlash, and especially from the Congolese community, and like I said before, her husband was from the Congo, so mm-hmm. they did form a close bond with other people from there in Melbourne, Australia. Okay, but like, O.J. Simpson is American, and like, do I stand by him? No. no. Like, you don't I have don't. to stand by for everybody that's part of your culture. You don't. Like, I don't know why they're like, no, 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 he did nothing wrong but exactly. hire a hit on his wife. And they go as far as a lot of people actually were threatening her. They left threatening messages for her and she returned home one day to find that her back door had been broken. And mind you, she's raising these eight kids alone now. Ugh. And she had to ask the Department of Human Services to help her find a new place to live. Oh my God. Yeah. She was really shunned by the community as if all of this wasn't hard enough. And I just think that she deserves so much more. I mean, she even goes on to say, I will stand up like a strong woman. My situation, my past life, that is gone. I'm starting a new life now. I think it's important to kind of mention this is 2015, right? Yes. This is so recent for this to be such a heartbreaking crazy anomaly of a thing for us Americans to listen to. Like, we're like, why did he have to pay 500 bucks for them to finally look into it? Why is she suddenly the culprit and they're mad at her for something? Why are we praising the fact that they didn't kill a woman? Like, you know what I mean? I mean, you think of this stuff and you're like, this happened in the 1900s. But it happened six years ago. I mean, you put it perfectly. Put it into perspective. This did not happen that long ago. No. You know, and all these, like, not, almost, they almost seem like stereotypes to us now. Of like, yeah. oh, this can't happen well, like, that now. That stuff doesn't happen That happened anymore. in, like, the, seven, the 70s. We're, we're so good now. But we're, that's we're not, not the truth. We are still so far behind of where we want to be and where we should be. It's, it's sad. And it really puts into perspective of, like, just how much work needs to be done on our behalf of, like, opening up our minds to knowing things about other places and just, like, raising awareness of things that are not happening just in our neck of the woods. Oh, of course. Because we do have it bad here in the U.S. And it's so easy to get really wrapped up in that, but I think it's really good to hear about cases like these to see that okay we're bad but still other places are in dire situations yeah and I think that a lot of people when they hear situations like this or like when they hear people like us complaining almost about like why don't we know about the other countries why like why are we sitting here complaining about what we have when we have there's other things going on whatever at the end of the day no problem for any country whether it's their justice system, their political system, their social system, whatever, no problems should ever be compared. What is bad here is bad here. And what is bad there is bad there. And two things can be bad at the same time without having to take away or add to another one. Exactly. So as much as we can think things are bad here, they are. But Mm -hmm. also we should pay attention that there are things that are bad or worse in mm. other places. Of course. And comparing that pain, comparing that injustice doesn't do us any better. Yeah. I think it's important that we are aware of it and we acknowledge it 100%. But I think a lot of times it does get compared, like you say, in media especially. Right. Where people are like, you have no right to think that America is messed up because look at that country. Or that country's looking at us being like, but what about you guys? You guys have this. And it's like, Yes. It is bad everywhere. We should know about all the bad things and we should try to change them. Thanks for listening. You can follow us at the Chalkline Pod on Instagram, Twitter at the Chalkline Pod, and you can catch us at our YouTube channel. The link is in our Instagram bio. 
Tune in next Thursday for another story.